From time to time, breakthroughs in our understanding of human evolution occur through fossil discoveries, like Lucy in 1974. The discovery of fossil hominins named Ardipithecus remittis or Ardi has significantly advanced our understanding of human evolution. Ardi roamed lush forests and woodlands in Ethiopia around 4.5 million years ago, while its predecessor, Ardipithecus gadaba, trod the same Ethiopian terrain some 5.8 to 5.2 million years ago, laying the groundwork for the evolution of us. The adventure began in 1992 when a tantalizing hominin molar was discovered near Aramis village in Ethiopia's Afar region. This find sparked the excavation of Ardipithecus ramidus by the middle Awash research team, led by Tim White and his colleagues. Throughout three thrilling field seasons, they collected over 110 Ardipithecus remittis specimens, painting a vivid picture of our ancient ancestors. Ardi skull, adorned with distinctive features reminiscent of early human evolution, serves as a captivating time capsule. It echoes the characteristics of other ancient hominins like Sihelanthropus chadensis and Orintugenensis, providing tantalizing clues about our evolutionary origins. These groundbreaking discoveries challenged the traditional narrative of human origin, shaking up long-held beliefs and breathing new life into the study of our past. Ardipithecus remitis, a resilient survivor from the Miocene era, bridges the gap between ancient apes and later hominids, offering a glimpse into a pivotal moment in our evolutionary history. Unlike its modern ape counterparts, Ardipithecus remitis navigated its world without specialized climbing abilities, opting instead to forage in the lower canopy for sustenance and safety. This fascinating creature unlocks the secrets of upright walking, a defining trait of our hominin lineage, surpassing even the iconic Lucy in its significance. The female skeleton of Ardipithecus remitis differs from chimpanzees, gorillas, and other primate relatives, representing a new type of early hominin. While Ardipithecus remitis may have led to Lucy's genus, Australopithecus, these fossils reveal a novel evolutionary grade of hominid that doesn't fit neatly into existing categories. Ardipithecus and other ancient hominins represent a significant evolutionary leap towards Australopithecus, with Ardipithecus remitis serving as a precursor to Lucy's direct ancestor, Australopithecus anamensis. While her foot retains a primitive opposable big toe, the other toes are adapted for bipedalism, providing a rigid lever for pushing off while walking. Artie's pelvis is also adapted for bipedalism, with shorter, broader blades lowering her center of mass for balanced walking. Despite these adaptations, Ardipithecus remitis still exhibits primitive traits in the lower pelvis, indicating it spent considerable time in trees. However, it didn't walk like Lucy instead. It was a slow, careful climber, moving flat hands and feet in the mid canopy. Artie's wrist bones allowed for more flexibility, unlike the stiff wrists of knuckle-walking chimpanzees and gorillas. Artie's development of bipedality, or upright walking, was a pivotal adaptation. This shift from quadrupedality, which African apes have mastered through knuckle-walking, suggests a major change in social structure. Interestingly, Artie's males underwent a notable change their canines became less prominent, indicating a shift away from male-male competition. Canine sexual dimorphism seen in living apes acts as a marker of male-to-male -male sexual competition. In this combination of factors bipedality and reduced canine size suggests a shift towards a social structure based on cooperation rather than competition. Kin-based male-male cooperation and pair bonding emerged, leading to improved reproductive success and social cohesion within the group. The discovery of Ardipithecus challenges the belief that early hominids arose in open savanna environments as they preferred wooded habitats. Evidence from Ardipithecus fossils, including craniofacial structure, tooth anatomy, tooth wear, and locomotor adaptations, indicates its preference for softer foods and climbing trees. The presence of monkeys with Ardipithecus, which are not adapted to open savannas, and elements of woodland adaptations in early Australopithecus species further support the fact. Efforts to link the emergence of hominids and bipedality to the opening of grasslands have been effectively disproven. Primates display a wide range of locomotion. Chimpanzees exhibit modified brachiation in trees and knuckle walking on the ground. However, Ardipithecus had unique adaptations for both arboreal and terrestrial locomotion, differing significantly from living primates. The expectations influenced by the close evolutionary relationship between humans and chimpanzees led some to anticipate knuckle walking traits in early Australopithecus. However, the hand of Ardipithecus, Australopithecus, and modern humans lacks the specialized features seen in chimpanzees, such as long metacarpals and rigid carpometacarpal joints. 
Ardipithecus' hands were not the predicted intermediate between humans and modern apes. Similarly, the foot of Ardipithecus does not match expectations based on either chimpanzees or humans. While it shares some features with extant African apes, such as shortened metatarsals, it lacks the extreme adaptations seen in modern apes for grasping. Instead, Ardipithecus shows newly evolved characteristics indicating substantial adaptation to upright walking. On the ground, Ardipithecus had more effective bipedal movement than modern apes due to its less specialized lower back and pelvis. Ardipithecus combined deliberate climbing with a unique form of bipedality, bridging aspects of both tree-dwelling and ground-dwelling locomotion. Ardipithecus had features indicating it could walk upright efficiently, similar to later hominids like Australopithecus and Homo. However, it differed in some aspects, such as its foot structure lacking a medial longitudinal arch and its knee possibly being positioned slightly further from the midline. These differences may have affected its ability to dissipate energy and efficiently load its lower limb joints during walking and running. Ardipithecus had a unique craniodental structure that differed from both modern great apes and later hominids like Australopithecus and Homo. Its dental anatomy suggests a less specialized diet compared to modern great apes, indicating broader dietary habits possibly including omnivory. The cranial structure of Ardipithecus also differed substantially from both chimpanzees and bonobos, showing features suggestive of a distinct niche. The Ardipithecus skull had a small cranial capacity similar to chimpanzees but with a short cranial base resembling Australopithecus. This combination suggests adaptations related to bipedality but may also involve other developmental factors. Early Australopithecus species had larger cranial capacities, possibly indicating changes in behavior, sociality, and cognition as they adapted to different environments. Ardipithecus rhamidus had a small degree of body size dimorphism, possibly similar to that seen in chimpanzees or humans rather than the larger dimorphism observed in orangutans or gorillas. Ardipithecus is likely closely related to later hominids, particularly Australopithecus. Evidence suggests a close relationship between Ardipithecus and the temporally nearest Australopithecus species, Australopithecus animensis. While Ardipithecus and Australopithecus exhibit distinct morphological differences indicating niche differentiation, they also share many structural and morphological details. For instance, the dental remains of Ardipithecus and early Australopithecus individuals show a continuum of features, suggesting a gradual transition between the two genera. The Ardipithecus fossils reveal a unique primate with a distinct body plan, sharing some evolutionary novelties with all living apes and hominids. One significant similarity is how their vertebral column moved forward into their chest area. This shift in the vertebral column's position facilitated greater arm mobility during arboreal climbing and clambering. While traditionally interpreted as adaptations for suspension and brachiation, Ardipithecus challenges this notion. Even though Ardipithecus didn't have typical features for arm hanging, its spine changes probably helped it move its arms around better for climbing and moving in trees. The Miocene fossil apes, with their diverse forms, help us understand the evolutionary significance of Ardipithecus. These apes had varied ball plans, ranging from primitive to partially derived features. For instance, Equatorius and Proconsul had quadrupedal pronograde ball plans similar to some monkeys, while Nacolapithecus combined Proconsul-like features with climbing adaptations. Purolapithecus showed wrist changes similar to living great apes but had only partially invaginated vertebrae. Dryopithecus displayed suspensory features in its forelimbs, while Oreopithecus exhibited extreme adaptations for suspension and was a highly specialized folivore. However, claims linking Oreopithecus to Ardipithecus are erroneous, highlighting the challenge of identifying shared derived characters based on homology. Ardipithecus fossils provide important clues about our early ancestors and their relationship with African apes. They suggest that the last common ancestor of humans and apes was probably a big ape with some unique features like special spine and shoulder mobility, but it didn't have long arms like modern apes. Before Ardipithecus was discovered, people often thought chimpanzees were primitive, which affected how we understood human evolution. But Ardipithecus shows that what we thought was primitive in chimpanzees might not have been primitive in our shared ancestors. Studying Ardipithecus helps us see how both humans and African apes evolved. We can tell that a lot of the special things about chimps and gorillas came after they split from our ancestors. Chimpanzees, for example, developed specific body structures and behaviors, like living in groups and being aggressive towards other groups because of environmental changes. 
On the other hand, Ardipithecus seemed to live differently, maybe on the ground more than in trees and in areas with fewer trees. It's like a missing link between earlier apes and later ones like Australopithecus. Even though we don't have a lot of fossils, what we do have, like Ardipithecus, helps us understand how life evolved on Earth. It also shows us that looking at the past can change our ideas about where we came from.